Yeah, why so? What? Y'all get artists to stop the church service. Say what? Are y'all gonna stop the church service here? Right? Ah. Saying what? Saying what? I'm just inviting. Yeah. We we must go by the station. We 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 are come we are come by the station. And we got left we service to come by the station. Right? That's what I say. That's what I say, brother man. We got a left we service to come by the station. Alright, good. This is the police van here. Jesus, Stopping the service. This is the sergeant. Jesus, this is the sergeant here. This is the sergeant. Sergeant, Jesus. please stop. Where is the start? Where is the sergeant? This is the sergeant here. For the Marblul police station. He's saying that we have to stop our church service because he has a report from Mr. Baharali saying that our service is affecting him. Is that true, sir? That is correct. Thank you. So, That's I it. Welcome back to our channel where we empower Guyanese voices and inspire change. As Guyana's top source for breaking news and in-depth coverage, we keep you informed on the latest events shaping our nation. Our top story is for 21st, September, 2024. First, did desperation drive this radio host to smuggle drugs? Next, how did this 19-year-old steal a motorcycle in broad daylight? Lastly, Brutal double stabbing in Leonora, one suspect caught, another escapes. Stay tuned for the full stories. How did this 19-year-old steal a motorcycle in broad daylight? Another brazen act of theft in Georgetown has landed a familiar face back behind bars. In today's report, we take a closer look at the case of 19-year-old Floyd Azor, a man with a growing reputation for stealing motorcycles. This latest incident involves the theft of a jailing motorcycle in Charlestown and Azor's bold escape attempt that ended in his arrest. Stay tuned as we dive into the details of this case and what it means for crime in the city. Floyd Azor, a 19-year-old mason from Lang Avenue, Georgetown, was accused of stealing a jailing motorcycle valued at $275,000 from Brad Farhan on September 16, 2024. According to reports, Farhan had parked his motorcycle in front of his home for just three minutes. When he returned, the bike was gone, sparking an immediate search in the area. Later that day, at around 2 p.m., Azor was spotted riding the stolen motorcycle with another individual. When they noticed the police, they attempted to flee the scene, but only Azor was caught. His accomplice managed to escape, but the stolen motorcycle was left behind. Floyd Azor is no stranger to the law. The police have identified him as a repeat offender, wanted in Region 4B Division for similar crimes. His history of motorcycle thefts has raised concerns in the community and within the police force. This latest arrest only adds to his already tarnished reputation, and it's clear that authorities are watching him closely. In court, Azor denied the charge, claiming that he wasn't in control of the motorcycle. Despite this, police reports suggest otherwise, with Azor allegedly admitting to the theft while in custody. During his court appearance, Principal Magistrate Faith McGusty read the charge to Azor, who pleaded not guilty. The prosecution, however, argued against granting him bail, citing his previous offences and the fact that he attempted to escape from police. Azor remains remanded in prison, awaiting further statements at his next court date scheduled for October 9, 2024. 
The court's decision will likely hinge on Azor's prior actions and the severity of this offence. This case serves as yet another reminder of the challenges that Georgetown continues to face when dealing with repeat offenders. With motorcycle thefts on the rise, it's essential for the community and law enforcement to address the underlying issues that enable individuals like Azor to commit these crimes. We'll continue to follow this case closely and provide updates as new details emerge. Brutal double stabbing in Leonora, one suspect caught, another escapes. Two young men brutally murdered in the early hours of Saturday morning. What started as a night out near the district club in Leonora ended in tragedy. As one suspect lies in critical condition under police guard, the hunt continues for another. This is the Leonora double murder. Welcome back to Guyanese Voices your go-to channel for the latest news in Guyana. In today's story, we cover a chilling incident from the West Coast Demerara that has left the community of Stuartville in shock. Mohamed Kalamid Nazir, a 30-year-old carpenter, and Arvinda Rupram, a 25-year-old construction worker, were brutally stabbed in a fatal confrontation early Saturday morning. Both men lost their lives following a heated argument that spiraled out of control. One of the suspects, a wounded security guard, is currently in hospital under police guard, while the second suspect remains at large. Let's dive into the details of this tragic event. According to police reports, the incident occurred at approximately 2.50 a.m. near the district club in Leonora, West Coast Demerara. Nazir and Rupram, along with two other men, were involved in a heated argument that escalated into a violent scuffle. During the altercation, Arvinda Rupram suffered multiple stab wounds, while Mohamed Nazir was stabbed once in his upper abdomen. Both men were quickly transported to the Leonora Cottage Hospital by the anti-crime patrol. However, upon arrival, they were tragically pronounced dead by the doctor on duty. Now, let's talk about the suspects. One of the attackers has been identified as 28-year-old Alex Amsterdam, also known as Mario. Amsterdam, who worked as a security guard, was also stabbed during the fight and received a wound to his abdomen. After receiving treatment at Leonora Cottage Hospital, he was transferred to West Demerara Regional Hospital, where he is currently in critical condition and under police guard. But Amsterdam wasn't alone. The second suspect, known only by the name Terry, managed to flee the scene in an unknown direction and is now the subject of an active manhunt by law enforcement. The police are working around the clock to locate him and bring him to justice. The police have been swift in their response. Upon arriving at the scene, investigators processed the area and recovered a black handle Rambo knife, believed to be the murder weapon. Officers are also interviewing several witnesses who were present at the club and have already received useful information that could help track down the second suspect. The investigation remains ongoing, and law enforcement is urging anyone with further information about the whereabouts of Terry to come forward. The swift action by the anti-crime patrol, who transported the victims to the hospital and began their investigation immediately, highlights the urgency of this case. This is a heartbreaking tragedy for the families of Mohamed Nazir and Arvinda Rupram and the community of Stuartville. Did desperation drive this radio host to smuggle drugs? Breaking news from Region 5. A 27-year-old radio host was arrested in a shocking bust after being found with over 500 grams of cannabis. You won't believe the reason behind this unexpected turn of events. Welcome back to Guyanese Voices. Today's story comes straight from the Weldard Public Road, where a stop-and-search operation led to the arrest of Shima Muna, a well-known radio host and singer from Georgetown. The details of this case are as surprising as they are concerning, so let's dive in. On the 20th of September, 2024, around 5.47am, officers from the Weldard Police Station were conducting a routine stop 
when their attention turned to a motor car, registration PAB 6190, traveling towards Georgetown. The driver, Shima Muna, appeared unusually nervous, and officers immediately noticed the strong scent of marijuana coming from the vehicle. This raised suspicions, and soon enough, things escalated. The officers, following proper protocol, requested to search both the vehicle and Ms. Muna. Although nothing illegal was found on her person, the situation changed quickly when they turned their attention to the car's trunk. Inside were two traveling bags, one red and one blue. What they found inside these bags would soon turn a routine stop into a major drug bust. Upon inspection, the officers uncovered bulky parcels wrapped in transparent plastic. The red bag contained two large parcels and a smaller one, while the blue bag had two more large parcels. It was soon confirmed that the contents were marijuana. The total weight, an astounding 14 kilograms and 515 grams. The police followed strict procedure, ensuring the seized narcotics were properly handled. Both the drugs and Ms. Muna were taken to the Weldard police station, where the substances were weighed and samples were taken for forensic analysis. The parcels were meticulously labeled, sealed, and handed over to the station officer for safekeeping. Following her arrest, Shima Muna made a candid confession. She admitted that the cannabis was hers, but what came next was unexpected. She revealed that her mother's hospitalization had forced her to turn to illegal means to cover the mounting medical expenses. It's a tragic twist to an already shocking story, desperation leading someone in the public eye to commit such a crime. After her confession, Muna was formally detained and is now awaiting further legal action. The police continue their investigation, and more updates are expected soon. In conclusion, what started as a regular stop and search operation led to the discovery of over 500 grams of cannabis in the possession of a radio host, Shima Muna. Her admission that she turned to illegal activities to support her hospitalized mother adds a personal and heartbreaking layer to this story. With that said, thanks for watching, and until next time.